Okay, I stopped at exit 272 off I-15 for a couple reasons. I'm talking quickly because it's very windy and there's an 18-wheeler idling right there. It's kind of loud. Uh, exit 272, this shell station behind you has 30 types of jerky. That's what the sign says. I've had the alligator. They have elk, boar, chicken, beef, uh, buffalo. I don't know if you could hear the 18-wheeler idling extra right now, but at least it's not windy. Uh, so I stopped here. I got some uh, for me, and I sent some back to my dad. Last time I drove from uh, California, he liked it. I picked up a lot for his uh, Father's Day gift. So I had some uh, positive feedback on finding a shack on the side of the road and filming there. So on the drive back from California, I found some uh, huge boulders on the side of the road. It's not quite as glorious as the shack was, I don't think, but we can cut to that scene now. I'm in this like crevice. I'm trying to get out of the wind. It still feels incredibly windy. I hope the audio is okay. So I forgot my uh, battery when I went to Morongo yesterday. I took it out to charge it, forgot to take it with me when I left, so I didn't get any footage from the casino or like the surrounding area, but I did take some pictures of some very interesting hands. You know what, it's really windy even in this like tunnel. I'm gonna go like over there, see if it's a little less windy. Uh, it's a little better over here. So first, I asked on Twitter, look at this picture and tell me what game you think this is. I'll let you look at the picture for a few seconds. It looks like a limit game, like 3-6 limit or 4-8 limit. Uh, the famous Bill Tate guessed 3-6 limit on Twitter. That was the only guess I saw before I left. It's 1-2 no limit. So I got there. There were wait lists. You can't call in. 1-2 and 1-3 no limit. Um, I put my name on both. 1-2 was a lot shorter. I got called for 1-2. I go to that table with 300 in red. It's 100 max and you can only... I don't know how strict it is, but everyone's using white chips. Like they're betting with racks. Or they're like taking a stack out of the rack to bet 20 whites. I was the only one there with red chips. Good thing, that hand that I took the picture of, that was the hand in progress when I got called to the table. And before that hand finished, I got called for one three. People gave me some strange looks because I showed up to a no limit game with $5 chips. How crazy is that? Anyway, some hands from the uh, one three. I played about five hours. The first one, uh, it's tough to see the flop, but you see a ton of chips. The flop was uh, Queen Jack 10, two spades. It went $20 pre flop. Six people put in the 20, and then five of those six people got all in on the flop. Middle set, uh, the bottom end of the straight, the nut flush draw plus a gut shot. One guy just had king two, he flopped an open ender on queen jack 10, and the fifth guy we never saw. So pre-flop, pocket jacks had the lead. On the flop, the bottom end of the straight, eight nine had the lead. The turn was an ace, so king deuce off had the lead, turned Broadway. And on the river, another ace hit. So the hand that started with the lead, jacks, ended with the lead, jacks full. Next hand. Um. I took a picture of the guy when he was dragging the pot. So that was a $500 pot. The top three cards on board were 977. On the river, the guy who's dragging the pot bet 100. He got called. The guy who bet the 100 had pocket sixes on 977. The guy who called had ace four, ace high. Never had a draw at any point. He called the whole way with ace high. Oh, the biggest pot of the night was ace-10 against ace-7. Uh, this is the one where the rack is in the middle. A bunch of people were playing out of the racks. I don't mind, just usually not allowed. <sighs> Here, no one seemed to care. 10-7-4, um, a ton of money went in pre, a ton of money went in on the flop. On 10-7-4, one guy has ace-10, one guy has ace-7. The turn is the magic card, ace. So the guy with ace-10 checked his top two pair. The guy with ace-7, worst two pair, bet 100. The guy with ace-10 check-raised 300, and the guy with ace-7 snap-shoved like 800 total to start the turn, 
And the guy with Ace-10 actually tanked, which I was shocked. When he tanked, I thought, I don't know, he had like Ace-3 or something at best. Maybe even like a very, very oddly played like pocket jacks or something. Uh, when I saw the Ace-10, I was shocked. He even thought about it. And he ended up getting all in. That was the biggest pot we saw. That was around, I don't know, between 1600 and 1800. Uh, two pair versus two pair. Uh, those were most of the hands, some of the big ones. Uh, I made 161. So Friday at um, Agua Caliente, I made 160. Then I lost 143. I think I might have said 148, but I lost 143 at Lake Elsinore. And then I made 161 at Morongo. Morongo is in an interesting place. So it's a very small building. There's a bowling alley, there's a bingo room, there's a few slots, there's a bar, there's a diner. So they told me it used to be the whole casino. And then like poker took off and they built the skyscraper just up the road a little. And that had the poker room for a long time. And then I think since the pandemic, poker stopped being in that large building and now it's in the bowling alley. I actually prefer it there. Um, yeah, you don't get as many people walking by, like, who didn't plan on playing poker, which was, like, basically the people we played with at Planet Hollywood. But, I don't know, it's, it's small. I like when there's fun stuff around. Not that, you know, bingo or bowling can be a quick thing, but, like, at MGM, you know, they have that basketball game. You put a dollar in, and you take shots for 45 seconds. I must have spent over $100 easy playing that game this year. Um, they also have some other games in that area. Uh, Bally's has Pac-Man downstairs. So I like when it's like in a kind of a an arcade type of building. So that's what Morongo is. Um, so the weekend's over. I'm going back to uh, Vegas. I would say, I mean, all the games were great. I would say like the best, you know, 30 minutes to one hour stretch was probably at Lake Elsinore. But overall, I played four or five hours each place. Uh, they were pretty similar. Um, all very good. A bunch of times we went like five or six ways for 20 bucks. I actually can't remember a time that ever happened at 1, 2, or 1, 3 in Vegas, except for uh, Planet Hollywood. So you remove Planet Hollywood and then like 4,500 hours of Vegas. I don't remember that happening once. I mean, that much must have happened 20 times this weekend. So the games are pretty good out here. Um, probably it's, I haven't really looked at the rates. It must be tough to stay out here long term. Um, but definitely if I'm going to spend a lot of time in Vegas in the near future, could definitely spend a weekend or like, you know, a week, two weeks out here, uh, for the games. So that's about it. Driving back nine days in Vegas and then the series starts and I head to Council Bluffs, Iowa. And one hand that I forgot to mention when I was at the boulders was, uh, this picture right here. You see the Ace King? Ace King won a three way all in. Uh, one of the losing hands was Ace Queen, which was overs and a flush draw on the flop. Another of the losing hands was King 10, which was one over card and a straight draw. The funny thing is that Ace King didn't have a draw at all. It was just the guy was dealt Ace King, and as soon as he sees Ace King in his whole cards, he's in too deep to ever fold under any circumstance. So a lot of money went in pre, and then on like a Jack 9 4 flop, he got all in, but he happened to hold against the flush draw ace high and the straight draw king high. So those were the hands at Morongo. I'm an hour away from Vegas, heading back. Uh, the hand histories, not that I give them that often, won't be as uh, exciting in Vegas as they were in California. But it was a fun three-day trip. Uh, actually, I didn't mention this. The only other day I've ever played poker in California in my life was one day live at the bike in 2015. It started out as like a party for the uh, regular viewers of Live at the Bike. And I went there and then they played and one guy didn't show and I got in the game. I have a picture from that day. Here's that picture. I'm the guy in the red hat on the left. Yeah, I didn't have a beard back then. That was the last time I ever shaved with a razor, December 2015. So in my life now, four poker days in California, four different casinos, and it was a fun trip, but now I'm on my way back to Vegas. The top three cards on the board. God. Uh, third hand. The next hand. There's a nice view. There's a lot of flies around here. A lot of things flying around. All right, hope it's really worth it for the scenery because this is pretty annoying actually. Are there like bodies around that there's this many flies? 
So it's not like I have raw meat in my pockets or anything. Hope there are no snakes. Right. Um, oh, and I have a good view of my car, so no one pulls over and tries to do something stupid to it. All right. Wait, let me walk a little bit. I was out of the wind, but... Uh, it was tough to keep my footing over there. Alright. I mean, there's a lot of broken glass, but this is a little better. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't remember the others. There was the two pair, the no limit, the $30 five way. Fuck, man. The turn is the ace. 